Hi, it's Greg Jones, 1623 Custom Harmonicas, your Sidel uh, Sales and Tech uh, Rep. And uh, today we're going to take apart a uh, Symphony Grand Chromatic. Just an absolutely beautiful uh, harmonica. Uh, chromatic. If you play chromatic harmonica at all, um, you know for sure that they just require a lot of maintenance. That's just the nature of, uh, of a chromatic harmonica. And uh, they have to be kept clean inside. We have saliva from our mouth that gets inside and moisture gets inside and that messes with the valves and the slide. And so sometimes you just have to take them apart. And so uh, today's video, we're gonna, we're gonna show how to do that on the Symphony uh, 48. Uh, this uh, chromatic can be taken apart with a simple, uh, simple screwdriver. And um, so we'll do that. And so what I recommend uh, whenever we're going to, uh, whenever we're gonna work I'm just saying, whenever we're going to work uh, on a chromatic, I always say that we should uh, have a towel. Uh, we should work over a towel, and that's because our parts uh, will fall down and they're going to bounce off. So I have a towel, I have a standard Phillips head uh, screwdriver, and I have a plastic container uh, that we can use to sort our uh, to store our parts. So, uh, which I think is a good idea as well. So. Let's just start here. So we're going to start with taking off, uh, taking off the covers. When we take off the covers, uh, I like to start uh, with one cover and leaving the bottom one on, and uh, that way we can set it down without damaging the bottom uh, reeds. At some point, we're going to have to take the other one off. But I can take a, look, a quick look at the uh, harmonica here. I can take a look at all the uh, the valves, and if you'll see, uh, they're all laying flat. They're all in uh, good shape. And since I'm going to be retuning uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and mark the plate uh, for my own uh, sake. Uh, this this is just a guide that I'm going to need uh, later uh, later when I go to uh, do my retuning. So anyhow, now that we have uh, the bottom cover off, or top cover, excuse me, we'll take the bottom cover. Aside, and now we're going to take a look at the bottom inside and uh, as you can see these valves are uh, nice and clean I'm going to be really careful when I set this down uh, to make sure that I'm not damaging any valves I have a little bit of a clearance with the mouthpiece and some of the screws so I know I'm not resting it on the valve just something you can do real quick uh, you can always uh, lift these valves up and check underneath them and uh, you're, you're going to get saliva in there and it's going to cause these valves to kind of stick and that gives you that popping noise. So that's just a quick little tip there. Anyhow, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take off the mouthpiece. Uh, you may have seen uh, the slide mouthpiece. You may have seen uh, videos that I've done on this previously, but uh, this slide comes out very easily. And I'll set that there. And then we'll take this screw here and something else I want to show you that's really uh, cool and you can simply take off the mouthpiece and, and you can look into the front of our harmonica and you can really get a good idea of what shape it's in I mean you can see quite a bit in there uh, you can see that the valves are all flat but if you're having problems you don't always have to take it completely apart uh, to sort of diagnose what's going on in there. So uh, as you see those valves, you always want to make sure that they're uh, perfectly flat. Uh, and uh, if, of course, if you see any that are sticking to the top there, that would be a, a problem. So anyhow, that's just something I'm throwing in there uh, for free there. And uh, so now we're going to start taking the uh, replate screws. These come off independently. Uh, in other words, these uh, reed plate screws go directly into the comb. They do not. Uh, they do not secure the bottom reed plate. So you can take off one plate independent of the other one. 
That's a really good feature. And uh, once again, if you play chromatic, you have to accept the fact that you have to work on these, and your teacher should be showing you how to uh, how to strip them down. Uh, generally, it doesn't take uh, a long time, and most of the time you can make simple repairs in just minutes. But in this case, we're going to show how to take it completely. One other thing you probably want to do, uh, it would be really a good idea, is mark mark the plate either, uh, preferably with an engraver, uh, but you want to do that because some of these plates can, can be a little confusing. They all look kind of similar. Uh, and so I like to do, I'll just put a little T on this plate for the top. And of course, I'll put a B on the here for bottom. I just put that little marking there so you, it'll be a good guide for you when you uh, go to put it back together. Um, so anyhow, here, um, here the plate comes off and I'm going to set it on my plastic tray over there to kind of protect the, uh, the parts, the reeds, and the valves. Anyhow, here's the comb underneath and uh, these, this screw right here is actually a set screw for the mouthpiece screw. So I can pull that out and the mouthpiece screw will come out. In this case, I'm not going to uh, gonna do that, but uh, just a, just an option or just a little neat little feature there. And that's what keeps these screws in there. And there's a corresponding screw on the bottom. So now we're gonna take the bottom plate off. We have that played off, and now we can take a look at the comb. Uh, so what I would advise uh, everyone uh, to do at this point is uh, very important. You can wash this, uh, but just another option is to uh, take it apart, use a little alcohol pad, and clean it. Just like that, and that gets the saliva off. Uh, from out of there. Saliva will dry on these slots and when it does uh, it becomes like an adhesive and when your valve comes up it will actually stick to the roof of the comb. Anyhow, I'm going to turn the car, the camera back up. So anyhow, that's a, a quick video on uh, how to disassemble uh, how to assemble a symph the Symphony uh, 48. I have a little bit of work to do on it and I'll uh, I'll come back in a while and we'll uh, we'll work on uh, on reassembly. Hi, I'm back with you, and uh, my uh, work on the uh, Symphony 48 replates is uh, is complete, and so now I'm ready to uh, reassemble. And uh, so we're going to get started doing that. A couple things to note: I'm always really careful. We have these valves and the reeds. And uh, I'm just careful how I set them. Uh, I do have, in some cases, specially made tools, but want to be careful about setting uh, them down where they pick up debris or where they mash into the replate or they damage the valves. So what we're going to do first, though, if you remember, I marked the uh, I marked the, uh, the replate top, and so I have the comb sitting down like that. I'm going to mount it on the uh, the top of this comb with the T facing out. Before I do that, though. Little trick I would recommend. I go through and plink all of the reeds. Uh, and the reason I do that is just to make sure that while I was working on them, I didn't pick up any debris in there or whatever. And you get this thing all put back together, you got something stuck in there, and then you gotta start all over again. So we don't want that to happen. So it's, it's real important to get the blow, uh, the blow reeds. Uh, and uh, so I know that the draw reeds are fine. I did that before I started the video. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to mount this here. Get it on. And then what we want to do, we want to look in there. See the see the uh, valves in there. Make sure they're flat. Make sure that in the process of setting it on there, I didn't uh, snap it. Or, you know, I didn't touch anything. And so now what I'm going to do is uh, start reassembling.
you'll notice uh, that there's no uh, spring as you know on the 48 uh, generally they're springless and we use a, a magnet uh, to uh, put tension on the slide to keep it out okay so now what I'm going to do is flip this over and there's a couple ways we can do that I can either use uh, my tray here or I can use this tray uh, here I just want to try and minimize uh, the risk of picking stuff up there is a little um, clearance on the bottom there those screws would probably keep it off okay and then if we look at my plate I uh, I marked this plate with a B for bottom so we're going to set that plate in there just like that and once I do that I'm going to look in there very important you know what I forgot to do I'm going to going to plant these reeds real quick just make sure we're clean in there happens all the time the reed will get mashed in the into the plate and it's so aggravating you get it all put back together and then you have a reed that won't sound so I'm gonna make sure you do that all right we're gonna put this thing together start putting the screws in All right, so now what I'm going to do, uh, I don't like to work any more than I have to with these reeds and valves exposed, especially the valves. Th those valves will, anything can damage them. So I like to get these covers on uh, right away so uh, that, that I don't risk any damage. It also allows you to set uh, set the chromatic down uh, with on the covers and then, you know and everything's protected so I don't have to use the tray as much. So what we're going to do, we're going to install these covers. Now I don't, um, we have to put the mouthpiece on and uh, there's a little tip, we want to leave these, we don't want to put these on tight, we're just going to leave that, uh, leave a little slack in there and we'll tighten them up uh, after we get the mouthpiece slide on. So, just enough to get in there and catch, we're going to pop it the other way around and get the bottom plate. I really like the way these things, uh, the symphony goes together, I tell you what, it's really made it's made so you can field strip it and really uh, maintain it. If you're going to play chromatic, it's just something you have to, you have to learn to do. All right, so I got these on. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this. Remember, once again, we can take a look right inside there. We can check all our valves out. Very important. Many of our problems that we have in our chromatic deal with the valves. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to grab, uh, I call this the rail. I think this is what we call it. So, L. so this is the rail piece that goes flush with the, uh, the comb. It goes down. And these, these screws are not actually... Uh, coming through but they will uh, they'll come through so don't, we don't worry about those just yet and then put on the mouthpiece so the mouth and and remember this groove um so you'll see that groove that that would be if we had a spring the spring would go here and uh so you're gonna have this open groove where the spring would stick through and we want that to match with the mouthpiece so then what we're gonna do we're gonna slide slide this on and this part can be a little tricky uh, but you'll be able to figure out it takes a little practice uh, maybe practice i need to so i'm having a little bit of a trouble so i'm just I'll spread these okay so what i'm going to need to do i see what i gotta do i gotta bring this uh cover out just a little bit more and this is really not that hard and sometimes it'll go right together see there it just slides on just like that so we just have to kind of tinker with it a little bit and sometimes you just have to set it down and uh, take a breath and then go back to it but anyhow got it in there we go so now what we're gonna do we're going to uh, at this point we can actually uh, tighten up the covers and we'll get a little help uh, 
cover to put a little friction on that mouthpiece. Keep it in there until we get it screwed down. All right, so just pop it around like that. Now you're looking at the uh, you're looking at this chromatic. If you look at it from your view, the slide button. Assuming you're putting it right-handed, it goes here. Is it goes in on this end? All right. So we need to do our number one hole is right here, and it's going to be the top. So there's two ways to look at it. This square should be the upper left, or this little groove, which is the groove for a spring, should be at the top. Okay. This is a little tricky, and you're going to get this wrong sometimes. I still get it wrong. Don't worry about it. You just pull it, pull the slide out, and replace. You know flip it around. So what we're going to do though, we only we only do the opposing screw to start with. So now this, the mouthpiece is screwed in uh, on the back. Now we're going to install the slide. Once again, the, uh, the spring groove goes up and I'm going to put that in just like that. This comes out and we hold it in. Screw it in like that. Look at that. There it is. All good. Cross tuned. You can see you got the, uh, the hole in the upper left, and uh, it's good to go. Anyhow, so that's uh, that's how to disassemble and assemble your uh, Symphony 48. The process is really the same uh, for the Symphony uh, 64 Grand Chromatic. In fact, it might even be a little bit easier because you don't have to deal with the magnet. Anyhow, thank you for tuning in. I'm Greg Jones, 1623 uh, Custom Harmacas. Thank you.